Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer with over 20 years experience training dogs and people. If you've got a doggy dilemma, Denise can help. It's all right. Come on. Hi, you. Say hi. Ooh. Well, that's not too bad. Maybe I should leave the bag outside. Why don't we try that one? Huh. What do you think? Huh? -huh. Well, you're supposed to be naughty. You're supposed to be naughty. Well, she was kind of mild. I mean, she can get worse. <laughs> it's usually worse. Is it usually worse? Yeah. yeah. yeah I was the really saying. bad time is when I go out the door. Yeah. Right. So, but is this about average when people come in? No. This is. It was a little. It was a little milder. It was a little mild. But we told her she was going to be on TV. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm going to go out and try it just one more time. Okay. And you guys did everything you normally do. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we'll Maxine. try. I'll ring the bell and leave my bag out there. Denise Mazzola. Welcome to another episode of Doggy Dilemmas. Today you're meeting Maxine, this cute little Jack Russell Terrier, and Meredith and Gary. So Maxine has some very interesting naughty behaviors that we've been discussing. So share, let's talk about the, the biggest or the worst one that she looks so calm <laughs> now. The, but The worst one is when Gary or I leave the house. Mm -hmm. um, picking up the car keys and getting our coats on, she'll just bark and jump and nip the okay. bottom of the coat and then when we are finally out the door she just howls and howls and cries and runs back and forth from the front door to another window and okay and it, then she'll see Gary leave out the window and then she'll just sort of calm down okay. but needs to find me okay know. so if you're yes. left in the house yes. and Gary's left then what does she do when she finds you? Just hangs around, yep, or she's okay. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> then yeah, she's it's, fine. It's and the leaving. same thing when yeah. I leave. She does Pretty the same. Much, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. actually, when I leave, I like Gary to hold her because I'm not too steady on my feet, mm -hmm. so I don't want her running around my feet. Okay, but so she Gary barks has and to pick her up. Would yes. probably nip at you the same as. Yes. Okay. Yep. And how about yep. if I leave? Does she do it when anybody leaves, or just the two of you? It's really right. just the two of us. Yeah, we. Uh, because we're afraid she'll run out mm -hmm. with, if we have guests. You know, I'll usually hold her. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and sit in the, right. the room. <laughs> and, oh, what are you We're talking doing? about you. Do you know that? <laughs> okay. And um, how about car rides? Does she, does she enjoy car rides? Well, yeah, the answer is yes, she enjoys them. <laughs> uh, the, the other answer is that I don't enjoy okay. them. Okay. Because... Um, she she runs around in the car. She barks at um, any trucks or motorcycles in particular. Or joggers. Or joggers. Anything that's moving. Right. Anything that, that's right. moving. Um, and then if we'll come and park at downtown Peterborough at a store, she, she may well bark at people. And certainly if a dog went by, she'd go right. ballistic. Right. And okay. it's not just a bark. It's showing her teeth. It's mm -hmm. pretty scary. Mm -hmm. okay. she, she really wants to kill them. Okay. <laughs> to the safety of the car window. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. And yeah. how about um, uh, walking around the development here? If we, if we run into a dog, we have to cross the street, turn around, go back another way, and hold on real tight. Okay. Because once again, she wants to 
Just she's go just, at them. So she's pulling and lunging yes. oh, and carrying yeah. on. Yes. And when, well, even yep. on a walk with just us, she pulls. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but if it's just primarily a man or a woman, it, she'll. It's look like she's being aggressive, but when she, I mean, if I let her or if she knows who they are, mm -hmm. uh, she'll be okay. She'll go up and sniff. Okay. Right. And um, starting to do that now. She never did that before. We didn't let her near people. Okay. But now we can slowly. Okay. They uh, people know to put their hand down. Right. Right. She does well. Okay. So let's just go back a little bit. Tell me, um, how old is Maxine, and where did you get her from? She's a year and a half. We got her in March from. A, man in Jaffrey okay who bought her for his wife and the wife died oh and he said he couldn't take care of the dog anymore okay and she was fenced in a kitchen with linoleum and that looked like all she had and okay well and the other thing is he had he had his Jack Russell male mm -hmm. yeah so when we went over to to meet Maxine and decide whether or not we wanted to purchase her. We never saw his dog, but his, and he was fenced out of the kitchen, mm -hmm. and he barked nonstop. The whole time we were there. Okay. So I've always kind of thought, did that have any impact mm -hmm. on, on Maxine? Mm -hmm. I don't, we have no idea if they didn't get along or whatever, we didn't. Right. Yeah. Well, it sounded like, um, and do we know where he originally got her from? Did you uh, share that? Um, a breeder in Vermont. Okay. So it sounds like she had very limited socialization. I mean, at mm -hmm. 18 months, she's, she's still a very young adolescent dog. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Jack Russell Terriers, you've had one before, but they're bred to hunt. So they're yeah. very much a sight, like they'll... Like a sight, a, you know, a mouse running by. If she saw a mouse running by, it would be all over, right? Because she yeah. would totally go after that. Mm -hmm. Terriers yeah. tend to be, and she's a Jack Russell Terrier, tend to be high strung, hyper, highly energetic dogs that, you know, she was bred to kill stuff and not to back down if she's in the process of going down a hole after, you know, a rat mm -hmm. or something. It's not like, oh, sorry, just kidding, and she backs yeah. out. No, yeah. she, you know, she yeah. goes for it. Yeah. So you've got all those genetics in there with a, uh, sounds like a very limited socialization time frame, which we can't go back and re-socialize her, but it sounds like she's made some progress. So initially you didn't let her near people because she was barking and mm -hmm. growling and things. And nipping. Yeah. Yep. And now she's not doing that so much, so not you feel so more comfortable to right. let her go and visit those people. Yeah. <laughs> Is your head heavy, honey? <laughs> <laughs> are you supposed time? to do, are you supposed to do that? Um, and... Who knows, you know, the behavior that you describe when she leaves. And Gary, I think you said that when you, like, you try to pick up the car keys so that she doesn't hear them. Mm -hmm. Because that is a trigger for her to start. Does she start barking as soon as she hears the car mm -hmm. keys? Oh, she, yes. well, she'll come. Yeah. 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 I mean, she'll, I try and sneak out so I don't have to go through <laughs> right. this, this trauma. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love to hear how people have changed I their know, behavior I to know. accommodate oh, the yes. haughtiness of their yeah. dogs. Yes. <laughs> You're not the worst by far. <laughs> That's pretty mild. But if I pick up the keys, she's out here in seconds. Okay. And, and she's at the door barking. Yeah. So we, yeah. we'll wait well, to she do a knows demonstration. Because she knows also that if I put my coat on and I grab her leash, she, you know, she right. knows exactly. Then she's calm. She's going for a walk. Right. And, th and then she's fine. So she doesn't carry on when the leash comes out? No. Right. Okay. But she carries on when we come inside and try and take the leash off. She wants to bite it, and she still wants to. And she likes, for some reason, yeah. likes to jump up, and she likes to chew on it for some reason. Right. Only when you come back in the house? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> but yes, I th thank you. Um, oh, now it's, now it's okay. Um, so a lot of, so sometimes the leaving behavior that you describe can be a, um, I don't want to say a, a low form, but a form of separation anxiety. Yeah. Where she has back chained that the car keys, is that the first predictor or is it like, does she have a reaction when you put your shoes on? Do you want to get down? Well, no, it uh, could be anything. So, you can't well, get on the table. And, and sometimes, I mean, the keys are in my, already in my pocket. Okay. And she knows I'm leaving and she's not going. Come up here. 
Show me. Because you put your coat on. Does you know, she have that reaction? Summer with no coat. If I just, if she knows I'm not, okay. she's not going with me, then she'll scream in the hallway. Okay, I'm just trying to determine what are the what are the signals to her that she's not going. Anything but the leash. Any yeah, right. It, well, pretty much. Yep. If I'm right. going and the leash is not there, and I'm, you know, I'm approaching the door. Right. She pretty much knows she's not going. Okay. Okay. And, uh, so she could have um, often dogs that appear to attack their owners as they're leaving is a form of separation anxiety. Which and and what it means is that. She's literally having an anxiety attack uh -huh. about the fact that you're leaving or that she's being left. Mm -hmm. You know, either one. We don't really know which. And then she she runs to find you, and then like she sees, mm -hmm. she gets right. on the window. Sometimes people say that the dog stays on the windowsill and just watches and stays there until the person comes back. Yeah. But yeah. that's not what happens when you leave. No, no. When you both she's, leave, she's yeah. howling. Do when you, we both leave, she's in her kennel. Oh, she's in the kennel. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, the crate. Yeah, the crate. Yep. The crate. The crate. Yep. And um, or if I'm just home alone and and leave, you know, and then leave, mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll put her in there and give her a couple treats. And as I'm leaving, she'll screech and howl. So I want to get a sort of a baseline and see this behavior. Does she know anything? Does she sit? Does she lay down? Does she do? Does she she have sits any? with a treat in our she'll hand. Sit. She'll we, sit and we, stay. Okay. We tried. You know, we we. Tried to train her. I, you know, I, I think we probably get a C minus for, <laughs> for, for training. But, okay. Uh, well, that's all right. That's honest. So, yeah. um, there will be, you know, there's, um, there's no one thing that's going to stop this. You know, I can't. Um, the first dog we saw this morning was on some medication. I can't. I can't make that determination right now. She's very calm. It doesn't look like that's something that she would need. Um, and I would certainly do training and other things first before we decided whether she would need that. And it would be, it would certainly be nice, and I understand why she can't, if we could get her on more walks or longer walks to, to try to get rid of some of this energy that she has. Um, she's closing her eyes. Maxie, don't fall asleep now. Um, it, you know, so that she could be, she could be doing something, <laughs> she could be doing something else. Um, so we're going to try a few things today and see, see what might work, what you might be able to do. Um, certainly preventing the behavior by having Gary pick her up when you go mm -hmm. is fine, but she's still barking and carrying on. Right. Well, yeah, I, I got to gotta hold, hold her tightly because right. she's trying to get down. And get, right. Yeah. Um, and you might want to start, um, we, won't, you know, we won't be able to do this today, but you can certainly report to me that if you did car rides with her in a crate mm -hmm. so that she is at least in the car and safe. We, right. we did that. We did that. We, we went we to Maine. We went to Kenny Bunkport okay. yeah, with and, some frequency. And how was she with that? She was okay. Mm -hmm. No barking? Yep. She couldn't no. see. Well, she couldn't see. Okay, so she was, right. so she was calm. Yeah, she right. wasn't yes. up. You right. know, she okay. was down. But that's the only way we could you know, yep. do yeah. it and be comfortable. Right, right. So you might, I mean, it would be nice to get her somewhat acclimated to the car mm. and slowly give her a little more mm. visual mm. <laughs> visual um, access. So it would start probably just the way you did it to Kenny, Kenny Bunkport, that she wouldn't have any visual access so that she wouldn't be reacting and just get used to going in the car. And I don't know, um, if she were my dog, I'd probably crate her in the front seat and I'd mm -hmm. have her somewhat covered, but then I could feed her small pieces of, of very high value food so that she'd start to make a positive association in the car. Mm -hmm. And then I might, um, I would probably keep her crated, but slowly, maybe t if I had a sheet on it, slowly take the sheet off and still feed her and let her start to look at the thing and get food for it. Look at the thing, it's called associative mm -hmm. learning, where she needs to make that association, see the jogger, get paid liverwurst. See the jogger, oh, get paid liverwurst. Oh, see the jogger, let's just look for the liverwurst now and, mm. and start to get a different behavior. She, um, it sounds like she's, are you grumbly? <laughs> um, and again, Jack Russell Terriers are really visually stimulated and she seems like she's over the top visually mm. stimulated. Yeah. Um, I was just reading a um, article on the way over here that then there's new a new study out for the dogs that bite the most, and dachshunds are number one. Really? Yep. 
and Jack Russell's are number three. Oh. <laughs> she's not bit. Look at how cute she is. She's never bitten anybody. So <laughs> she's like, no. Looks like she's hanging on by her head on the table. Yes. <laughs> Maxine, you're gonna have to get alert in just a, in just a minute. She'll, uh, she'll nip when we had her. Oh, she was less than a year old or a year. We were at Kenny Bunk Park with friends. Yeah, she did. And, and the husband is a, kind of a really big guy, tall and, mm -hmm. and heavy set. And, uh, and his wife is really short, and she nipped her, right. really. Right. I mean, like jumping up and grabbing her hand? Or no, her in the no, hip. nipped her on the thigh. Br broke, broke her blood. pants. <laughs> because she was leaving? Or no, what was she doing? just standing it, what, on just, the patio. No, well, it was inside, but it, it, she was just new. So should she just come in? Into the room, yes. And um, he did. Since since that time, she's gotten more familiar with those two mm -hmm. people. And, right. And but still, anybody that comes through the door is the barking and the jumping and. Right. Right. Okay. So where um, can you go jingle your car keys? In your okay. pocket? No, go out and. No, just where are the? Just do the car keys. Don't even oh. go to the door yet. Okay. Well. <laughs> What, the, what? What are we doing? Are we? Are we? <laughs> what? Are we going for walkies? Huh? Yeah, you think so, huh? Don't you? What? What's that? Huh? Yeah. So mild compared to what you've described, right? She's yes. because we're all sitting yeah. here and it's a little yeah. bit different. Okay. So. And, I mean. The only time I do that is over there with the, you know, getting ready to go out the right. door. So that's where the car keys live. So any yes, yes. Okay. Right. All right. You know, if she's out of the room, that brings her into the room. The okay. sound of the keys. Sure, sure. Because okay. the keys don't initiate the parking. My going towards the door without her initiates the parking. Right. This is just this would yeah. just be the first thing that yeah. tells her something's going to yeah. happen. Okay. So. Uh, Meredith and I are going to stay here, but Gary, I want you to just go through your normal departure routine. We're just going to let her have at it and see what she does. Okay. And I'll just observe from across the room once you get up and, All right. and move around. And walk to the Taurus, too. And walk away. Would she normally be barking? <laughs> Well, we just have to move in with you. No. No, no. Normally, she would sometimes come back and find you. Yeah. Yeah. And then when he comes back, will she have a? No, she'll be fine. She'll be she'll very be fine. happy. Yeah. She's sitting there now. She's watching. And that's what yeah. she does: is just sit yeah. there and watch. She doesn't necessarily yeah. dig yeah. at the window. Or... And she knows I'm here. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. And if it were morning, then she'd come back into the and bedroom and she'd jump up on the bed with me. Okay. And she'd be fine. But it seems like normally the barking would have happened earlier. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And now, let's... Well, you did better on that one. <laughs> did I come home? All right, huh? so let's have... Um, so go ahead, Gary, put your coat back, and then we'll sit down again. And then yep. I want to do it again, but with both of you leaving. Right, because that makes it worse. Or you're, she's normally created when you both right. leave. But right. let's just see yep. okay. what happens. But we'll have to go yep. through... And is your coat hanging there yes. as well, too? Yep. Okay. Yeah. And did you pick up the car keys, Gary, when you did that? Uh, no, I didn't. I mean, she. The leash. She didn't was come watching out. me. She right, knew yeah. what was going on. Yeah. Right. Okay. And she watched you out the window. Yeah. Well, I mean, she watches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's have. We're just going to do this another exercise. So let's have you both leave this time. All right. We're both going to leave. Oh. Okay. This we've not ever done. She's always been in the kennel, so this will be interesting.
We gotta go, pups. Sorry. Yep. Okay, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. This was going to be such a big thing. What? I didn't think this was going to be such a big thing. Oh, someone's got a fire. Okay. I know. All right. <laughs> Watch out. I know. That was a good one. Yeah. She was fine until I said something. Come on back in. Yeah. You know what? She was fine until I said something. What do you mean? Said something. Yeah, I think you you did. I noticed that, but I can't remember what you said either. We'll be right back. I said we'll be right back. You know. She, she was, was building up. She was getting she up was, to that point, yeah, but she was watching us. But she was quiet. All right, all right, all right. All right. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, here we are. Okay. okay. All right. Be good, girl. Hey, no bites. No, no. No, you just opened the closet door. <laughs> Gary. She going after the coat? Yep. When, when you're All right. She's telling me. Stop it. All right. All right. All right. All done. All right. All right. All right. All done. All done. All right. Okay. All right, so that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> what an ordeal. Wow. Yeah, every, I every time. I completely understand why you're trying to sneak out to avoid that whole shenanigans. Right. Okay. So we're just, I just want to focus on the departure. There are, there are several things I'm going to give you to do. Some will work and some won't. And the best thing to do is just keep, keep in communication with me and let me know what works and what doesn't work. So one of the things to do is called desensitization. And I would like you to start to desensitize her to all of her triggers that tell her you are leaving. So one would be, you seem like a very, um, like your keys are always there. Yes. Oh, it would be nice if my keys were always in the same place. <laughs> so I want you to be a little bit more like me. I want you to move them, oh. pick them up and put them on the table. And then just go about doing whatever you're going to do. And then pick them up and move them and oh, move them okay. someplace else and keep track. You could pick them up and just put them down. Just jingle them and then put them down and then walk away. So that the keys start to not be the predictor of your departure. And that's going to take some time. How long have you had her? Since March. So March and it's November. So almost right, she's right. had almost a year of. Yeah. And did she do this right away or did it come on over time? I think it got worse. Yeah. You know, it, I, I, it has been getting worse. Yes, it's been right so away. So maybe, so yeah. from the day you picked her up, she was going crazy with the keys and stuff. Okay, so she might have been doing that in the previous home. I'd no, like no, it. I don't think. I don't think she. I think it's gotten worse. I don't. She didn't start I don't out remember this way. having this nightmare every time I leave the house in the beginning. Okay. So the keys are a signal to her, putting on your coat. Mm -hmm. So you might put on your hat and then go back and sit down and read or whatever it was you're doing. So you're going to have to consciously say, oh, I'm not going to leave now. This would be a good time to pretend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go put on your hat and coat, come back down here and sit and work on whatever it was you were working on or, or watch TV or, or just move the coat around so that it, it, it devalues it. So she mm -hmm. can't determine whether that will be the predictor of it. Um, and you may when you're really, so that would be one thing, and you both can do that. And I think you were right, Meredith. I think you said be good. I, I said be back. Be back. Or be back. And that yep. set her off. Yes. So I don't know. You just said we'll be back, mm -hmm. and she's, she's not having a reaction. So it might be in relationship to over there. Mm -hmm. if you, so, but you could try that. Stand in the kitchen and say we'll be back. 
and see if she does anything. And if she does, then either stop saying it at the door, which will be hard because it's something you automatically say to try to reassure her, but she doesn't understand. She just hears da-da-da. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so that would be one thing for you both to desensitize her to all of the triggers. And you may, right now we've got three, the car keys, the hat and coat, and maybe you saying something. Um, but I suspect, does she have a reaction when you put your shoes on or are your shoes on and you wear them around the house so you don't put them on just before you go out? So right. shoes aren't a trigger. Okay. No association with okay. shoes. Good. Yeah. The other thing I want to try to do is she seems very food motivated. Yes. Yeah. And um, we are going to try a couple of things. So sometimes, and again, these are the ones we're just not going to know whether they're going to work or not. Let me just make sure she likes these. And her anxiety may be at a level where this little technique isn't, gonna, isn't going to help. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit, this is a toy that's very, it just rolls around and the food comes out. Mm -hmm. So she'll have to have a little bit of experience with it. And I wouldn't put, this is kibble, it's not her kibble. Let's see if she likes that one. Yes? No? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. So this should be on the higher value of food. So I would say not her kibble. This isn't her kibble, so I'm going to guess it has some value to her. I'm going to use um, some of these little Bill Jack treats because they're nice and small. Mm. And this, wow. we'll put those in there. And... So be creative. I'm going to close this up so she doesn't think it's a buffet. And she gets this before. Well, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to, what, what I want to, you're just going to have to play with this a, get, a little bit and tell me if it works or not to see if we can get her to do something else so that your departure will now be a predictor of some yummy things happening. Or maybe she'll still attack you at the door and then she'll go and have fun with this. <laughs> we'll have to see with it. And some dogs, it makes no difference. Like once they know you're going, they check out and food is no longer of any value to them. Right. Maxine. So I'm going to let her just, I want her to figure out she's got to move it around. Yep, and a little food comes out. She didn't eat that though. Maybe she's going to carry it around. And she's going to go hide it. Yeah, she's going to go bury it. We got her a, a yeah. dog bone. <laughs> so much for <laughs> You guys want to follow her? <laughs> I can go with the GoPro. She'll now go behind the sofa and she'll... Right. She's the hidden, plant hidden the bone yeah. way uh, yeah. in the back behind the uh, the cushions and in the shower, She's behind the wrestling. shower curtain. Yeah. She'll pick so, up... Somebody but she, so she won't eat it right away? No. Nope. I think she is. I'm just going to go look. <laughs> she'll pick up I'll something report on to you guys. Walk. And then she'll um, find some place to bury it on the way home. No, no, she's eating it. She is? Well, she is. She's just under the table playing with it. It's very in ineffective for the TV cameras. Maxine, can I see it? Can I see it? Come here. Maxie. She's totally like in this little Jack bring Russell it. Terrier yeah. tunnel thing. That, she, yeah. Yeah. she likes yeah. that. She goes back there. Maxie, Come on. bring it. Bring Maxie. it out here. Come here. I want to see it. I want to check it. Come Show on. it to Mom. Come on. Here. Come Maxie, can I see it? Can I well, see it? Well, she does like it. <laughs> Let me just Can I see it? She's, nope, there she goes. Let me check it. Let me check it. Come here. Oh, sure do. All right, well, we'll make a trade. So can you offer her this, one of you that can reach, and then take the toy back? All right, so. Why do I, Dad? I got her right here. Let's just, she does that, and she does this. Yeah, don't, don't give her back the toy. Okay. I want to put some more okay. stuff in it. Um, if we give her that, and she does that, and she goes into her favorite spot, and then we can leave. That's what I'm wondering. So let's, let's try this. Load it with more food, something a little bit better. Mm. All right, so the order of operations is going to be important. Because right now, if you give her this and put your coats on, this could then become the mm -hmm. predictor of your departure. Right. And then we'll just have another trigger happening. Right. So what I've just put in is some homemade liver treats, which I hope will be like super extra special to her. 
So what I would like to do is go and start to leave. You're going to take the toy with you. And maybe once you have your coats on, but before you're actually walking out. Will that work? You could give that to her. Let's try that. Or as you're walking out, you could roll it to her. And let's, the, the question is, will she be interested in it, or is her anxiety going to be too much that, that this will be meaningless? We'll know pretty quick. Yeah. So, I mean, Gary could just do it if you wanted to just yeah. wait here, right. Meredith. So you give it to her as after you have your coat on? Yep. yep. Like, see, look what, I, look what I got. So you can pick up the keys and put your coat on and... Okay, I'm going to put it there. How long that'll last, but he's gonna take a walk. <laughs> he's gonna go for a walk. <laughs> I don't know if you Wow. <laughs> that wow. was so funny. Wow. <laughs> she took one look at you and looked back at that the toy and <laughs> that was it. That was it. <laughs> wow. Wow. Maxine, you are just crazy. So this is very novel. Right, the food that's in it is novel. How you get it out is pretty novel. So this, um, uh, I'm going to give you some other suggestions. I still think you should desensitize. If it's as simple as she's going to enjoy something like this when you leave, that would be really great. That's I don't great. know how long lasting that's going to be. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to yeah. be honest with you. Right now it's so novel that it's interesting, and you've left a couple of times already. Yeah. So I would suggest this. I would also suggest, so I think, these are not toys that are going to be readily available to her. You leave, you give her one. And then when she's done or not interested anymore, who's ever around is going to pick it up and put it away so that it will remain novel. If it's around her all the time, it's going to be, oh, yeah, it's that same old toy. Okay. The toy that comes out from under the, under the sofa or the bed, right, is always more interesting than the toys that she's had access to right along. So there's a whole bunch of other ones. And they're just toys that I call brain toys um, that she can. I've got a big one. I've got a smaller one of this. I'm just going to pull out the big one, though. And the treats. So any of these things can be stuffed. Oh, here's one. Can be stuffed and made as interesting as you want. So there is a smaller version to this one. So this is the infamous yeah. Kong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do we know if she likes peanut butter? She loves oh, it. loves oh. peanut butter. Yeah. So I would slather peanut butter, and then again, some really high value. These are high value because they're new to her, the, the Bill Jack treats. Bill Jacks. Okay. Um, you could also use chicken. You could use leftovers. You could use some of her dog biscuits. But again, we're trying to make it as as we want your leaving to now be a predictor of one of these things. So the same idea. She'll have it. Hopefully she'll enjoy it. When you come home or when who's ever here, when she's done with it, then you're going to pick it up. So she won't have access to it. So these are, we'll call these your departing yeah. <laughs> toys. Yeah. This one is a good size for her. It's all the same ideas. And it's just that I would rotate through them so it's never the same. So don't fill them all with peanut butter. That will be very boring to her. Mm -hmm. But you could do cream cheese, peanut butter, or some wet um, dog food. And then I sometimes pat in the other dog food or little treats. You could do this on both sides. And how does she get those? Oh, well, then, those yep, holes? and I, well, no, I oh. usually freeze them so they don't fall out, and it's really easy for her. And then you make it as, as oh. easy or as difficult as you want for her. So for her, I would leave it fairly open until she starts to get the hang yeah. of this. Hmm. Okay? These are, you know, these don't have the adjustments, but she picked up on this very quickly. And what was so funny, Gary, is that you rolled it. She went for it. I can't remember if she had her mouth or not, but she took one look at you, and she went right, right. back to the I did. Toy. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> she was yeah. like, okay, Whoa. who cares about that, <laughs> right? <laughs> then I would also intermix in there. Like this is called a, um, this says a buffalo treat. It's a, I call them a flossy. So you could also 
give her this when you leave and let her chew and you know eat this just a edible tendon thing yeah, that she can okay. chew and eat up yeah. but don't give them to her any other time so that so that we want these things to be extremely valuable um, and there's all sorts of other chewable things that she can have I think this would be there are some thinner ones but you could certainly use something like this and the um, the one biscuit stop ball carries on yes right? yep yeah. and the biscuit ball I have a there's a smaller one in the car I just didn't grab them all you could, uh, how old is your niece? Two. two well, she's too young probably, but children are really good at stuffing this stuff. Like they get so creative. So I sometimes will put, um, a, it's called a bully stick, a straight one through here. So, it, uh -huh. so it's sticking out like this and it sticks out like this. And then I also have peanut butter and other treats in here. So this one will last a little bit longer if you needed to. Um, it's going to be a smaller size for her. Mm -hmm. But again, all these things are going to just be novel and you know, the $99 question is how long will this entertainer, will she, will it, it would be amazing if it was that simple that she, that you could give her one of these yeah. things when you leave. <laughs> so that your leaving is now like, oh, go, go, Gary, go. <laughs> because, I, Jeez. because I want one what of these. What have you done to us? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You got a lot of other issues that aren't that quick to, to, quick to solve. So, so in terms of departure, this is what I would do. And what I would do when you both leave, okay, is um, is your crate right here in the kitchen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Hang on yes. a second. Right under the desk. After the... So before you go, right, this is normally in the kitchen, yep. but uh -huh. we can't see it in the kitchen. You're going to put the toy ah, ah, in there <laughs> as you're getting ready to go. So she can't have it. Okay. So. Oh. So right, it'll make yeah. her yeah. want to get in there. Like, hurry up and go so I can get in there and get my toy. Okay. And then when you go, you're just going to open it and let her get in. Go in. But you have to stay in there. And then she's just going to eat it in there while you're gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, she d she's not attacking you, per se, right when you both leave because you've preemptively put her in the crate, but she's howling and screaming yeah. and yeah. still yeah. carrying on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in the kitchen, same thing. You're going to say, oh, here it is. Put it in. Close the door. She can't get to it. Get on your coat and stuff and let me know what she's doing. Mm -hmm. If it, it might work. How, and keep track of how long does it work and when does it stop working. And then, you know, we can have some other things to do. The, all the outdoor stuff is completely, we can, um, is trainable and we can fix that. The car stuff we can also fix. It's just going to take yeah. time. But I would like, you know, my suggestion would be get another crate, even a little bit smaller than that's, this one. Yeah, that's going to say that's one in the garage. That's the same size. Oh, the well, same it size. Do, I don't know what size car you have. It's just, and just leave it in there. And just start taking her in the car covered. So that would allow her to sometimes go with you, which would help this whole anxiety thing yeah. about being left behind. Mm -hmm. And then she can be in the crate covered. She could have, you know, not so high value. Like, let's not ruin these. She can have little, but little treats or something. So she can at least be in the car with you, not be left behind, but not making it so unpleasant for you that you don't want to take her anymore. And then we can slowly work on uncovering the crate and um, having her be do other things. So she should also. I would also teach her to sit, to lay down, to leave it, and to come and call. Those would be the four basic things I would teach her. When we're outside, I'd work on some sort of attention. But um, when I work with dogs like this, we'll start with those four basics, get them really solid in the house, then work on them outside of the house, but not with dogs or people around, just still getting her to say, oh, OK, this is, this is worth my while. And that's what she's looking out for, is her own self-interest. <laughs> yes, I think she loves us. But really, you know, if I started to feed her liverwurst and work with her, she'd be all about me. Right. <laughs> right? Right. She'd probably yes. be really upset to see me leave. Yeah. Um, so then outside, it's a matter of using those behaviors so we can now communicate with her in English to sit, to lie down, mm -hmm. to give her something else to do. Because right now, when she sees dogs or people or whatever, she goes into what I call lizard brain and she's totally reacting. And she's probably reacting, yes, because she's a Jack Russell, she's young, and she probably had very little experience seeing all that stuff as a puppy. Mm -hmm. So there could be some, a little fear factor in there. Dogs are also about either come closer or go away, and her behavior sounds like she's signaling go away, go away. And you'll see it worse in the car because there's a barrier. And that barrier tends to make dogs more 
bravado, like, oh, go away, go away. Yeah. Yep, but sometimes if you roll down the window, they're like, what? Yeah. You know, some dogs will jump out, some dogs won't. We don't, we don't need to find out with, yeah. with her. But for today, I would like you to start with these for your departure. Be creative. Um, you can have them ready to go and in your refrigerator. So it's not, so you don't have to prepare one, right. which will signal to uh, her, yeah. you're leaving. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. to spend a day, prepare them, get, and then, and then try that. Okay. And let okay. me know if that works. But cool. that was really cute. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, she's going to take that and she's going to hide it. Mm -hmm. No, it's in her bed finish. right now. She'll finish. She's Where is She's kind of cozy in there. All right, Where any questions? It? No. All right. So hopefully we've solved one of your doggy dilemmas. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of others, but. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the car thing, too. Um, yeah. I mean, I used to enjoy taking Jack on her. Right. Yeah. You know, and because uh, she heats it up even with head to head here. And you'd see people walk down and you get a big smile on their face because he, he, right. yeah, you know, yeah. and it, it was a disappointment. Plus I spent a hundred dollars and she was on in it seat. once. <laughs> <laughs> in the seat, right, yes. right. Yeah. There's, no, uh, there's no sort of greater joy than being able to take your dog with you. I love taking my yeah. dog. And you go through yeah. the drive throughs and the dump yes. and you get the yeah. biscuits yeah. and they get all excited. Yeah. And boy, I've had some other dogs in my car that are like her and, and there's no, there's nothing worse than to being trapped in this moving vehicle with a screeching Screaming. dog and yeah. you can't necessarily do anything at the time because you're driving mm -hmm. yeah. right? and then you know it gets to be dangerous so yeah. Yeah. I would just like to see you you can certainly use this size crate I was just thinking something smaller would be well easier it, to it manage. would be easier yes yeah. yeah and I'd put it in the back seat like she doesn't need to car. be in the front yeah. Yeah. Right. and just start taking her mm -hmm. does she have a little jacket to wear in the winter or yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I would just start taking her and that will help some of this departure yeah that's, as well. that's easy enough great. Yeah. yeah great yep. take her to summer street she loves going there if That's we don't a, see another dog. A railroad track. Oh, walk. right, right. Yeah. The yep. walkways. Yep. Yeah. All right. Any yeah. questions before we wrap up? No, no. no. I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged. Cream cheese, to... you said, though? Cream mm -hmm. cheese? Yep, you can use cream cheese in here. Peanut butter, almond butter, um, wet dog food. It doesn't okay. matter. This is just a little, um, because of the plastic, it doesn't necessarily stick well, so sometimes I do freeze them. Okay. So you can freeze both halves, and when you put them together. So when I freeze it with peanut butter, then I'll put some fresh peanut butter or fresh cream cheese on it just before I give it to the dog so that they have that, and that instant gratification going on right away. Yep. All right. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Denise. You're welcome. Thank Appreciate you. it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Doggy Dilemmas. We met cute little Maxine, the one-and-a-half-year-old Jack Russell Terrier, who we hope is going to stop attacking her owners when they leave the house. See you next week. If you have a doggy dilemma, Denise can help. Visit www.denisemazzola.com for more information. Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer tested through the Association of Pet Dog Trainers. The association requires recertification every three years with a minimum of 30 hours of continuing education. She has been training dogs and working with families for over 20 years. Mm -hmm.